Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today I have a knife that I borrowed from one of my viewers, a viewer who lives you know, fairly nearby, 10, 15, no, oh, well, 15, 20 miles away, roughly, and uh, he let me borrow the Cold Steel Con. American Tanto style, because uh, Tanto, you can have an argument about what Tanto means. If you say American Tanto, this is what you mean, a blade that looks like this. And we've got a G10 handle scale, trident back lock, very, very strong lock, uh, medium sized knife. I don't call this small, of course, because I like small knives. <laughs> That's a small knife. So a medium sized knife that fits my hand. You see just a little blue right there. And I've got my hands are just borderline with extra large, large to extra large. So I think we've got a knife here that almost anybody, except for the guys with the biggest hands, are going to find a knife that is very comfortable in hand and I think this thing is a pretty good user so stick around for the full review coming at you right now so we do have a knife that I think looks kind of cool it comes in this blue color I don't think it comes in any other color maybe I'm wrong so to my eye it almost looks slightly bluish I mean purplish but then again, my hands look a little bit that color too. So the color is a little bit off right now. Don't know why my camera's a little bit off. So the color is a little more blue and a little less purple than you can see right there. And uh, it says Cold Steel AUS-8 Taiwan. It's a Japanese uh, AUS-8A steel, which is you know a decent budget steel. We've got a unique uh, thumb stud deployment device. <laughs> It's uh, you know a piece of tube or pipe that they've you know milled the end and it's shaped on, and it's tightened down by a tiny little uh, screw right there. Uh, we've got your know, typical Tanto straight edges, flat blades, nice little sharpness choil right here, and uh, then we've got a tiny little forward choil right here. So you can sneak up and use it this way if you've got some more delicate work to do. And that works fairly well. Just make sure you just keep, you know, the tip of your finger here. If you go down with more of your finger, you'll have some of it touching that cutting edge. Or you can just have your hand back here. So this grip works good. Reverse grip, as I showed earlier, works quite good. If you turn over, you see just a little bit of blue right there. So good, strong grip if you needed to stab something. Uh, this Tanto blade shape is super strong for, you know, puncturing things. Uh, very nice, thick tip on this blade very strong uh, the back lock you know has a pivot point right there so there's a pin there and a pin there and the uh, body gets screwed on here and here and you know it unlocks very well I really like the uh, trident lock it's a good strong lock sometimes it takes a little bit of time to wear it in some people complain that it's hard to unlock it um, yeah I've had a bunch of trident locks in my day when it's brand new yeah it can be a little bit hard to unlock sometimes but you know it does that tiny little bit of wear in that it needs fairly quickly and then they get quite comfortable and a back lock should be a little bit more challenging to open than some others because it's a super strong lock that just is not going to come uh fail and close on you except under the absolute worst possible situation imaginable like it just in real life, it's just not going to happen. No, that's not a guarantee. I'm not going to set myself up for that kind of legalities. <laughs> We've got a pocket clip that's right or left. And because it's G10, they've inserted a little, some kind of metal uh, threaded insert right there. I'll show you a close up of that. So that you can screw your uh, pocket clip on nice and tight. This is used, uh, it was first Kevin Cleary's, and he sold it to my friend. And I don't know if Kevin got it new or not, or if he got it used. Uh, this pocket clip seems to be slightly bent down. Uh, you can still use it, but it could just be lifted up a little bit. I'll show you a close-up shot of that and what I mean by that. It still goes in a pocket quite well. See, there you go. No problem. The first time, yeah, I did slip off and went underneath, but that's pretty rare. It's just going to go and catch on there. 
quite well most of the time, well, almost always. But like I said, it could use a tiny little bend upwards right there. Not hot in the hand at all. If you get used to the little thumb stud, you can flick it open with some authority like that. But, you know, generally just opening it like that is plenty. A very good ambidextrous knife. Uh, backlocks are often the best kinds of knives for ambidextrous handling. And, um, you know, I just like that a lot. Uh, another really good ambidextrous knife would be an access lock knife. Um, but these back locks are very, very good as well. The texture on the G10 is nice and comfortable, not too aggressive. Very, very well done. So we've got washers in here, obviously. There's no ball bearings. It doesn't need that kind of thing. I'm not going to take it apart to show you because it's not my knife. And um, let's do the dimensions. I'm only going to mention the metric measurements. I'll put the imperial measurements on the screen as well. Cutting edge is 7 centimeters. Blade length is seven and a half centimeters. Blade thickness is three millimeters. Blade depth, and I did it right after this hump right there, 2.4 centimeters. Thickness of the edge behind the grind, 0.8 millimeters. I don't know how many times this has been sharpened, but that is a little thick. And uh, I'll talk more about that later. The uh, grind angle, while well, it's... 20 degrees per side now because it's been sharpened properly. I don't know what it was originally. The handle length is 10 centimeters. Grip area between my thumbnails, eight and a half centimeters. Handle thickness, not counting a pocket clip, just under one centimeter, 0.95 of a centimeter. The handle depth right here by the lock is 2.4 centimeters. And the total length of this knife with the blade deployed is 17.5 centimeters. It weighs 72 grams. Yeah, two and a half ounces. I'll give you the imperial measurement there. Two and a half ounces. Very good for this size knife. And that's because we've got these G10 handle scales and there's no liners in there at all. <gasps> Some people go, <gasps> yeah, no liners needed. G10 is an awesome plastic yes it's plastic and some people are really scared of that word they hate plastic they think plastic is nasty well plastic has been around for a number of years now and modern plastics are totally different than the plastics you grew up with um, g10 is a very strong durable plastic it's got fibers inside it that reinforce it and it's strong enough to be a knife like this without any liners at all and you know cold steel tests their knives you know so they've clamped this onto something and put weights on the end of the lock and you know <laughs> they've tested it thoroughly and you know the g10 doesn't fail it's a good material uh, i really really like it and that's one way that they saved weight on this um uh, the price for this knife well, it's around $42 in most places. I saw a few stores that had it, you know, $38, $39, but stock was either not in stock or they said they've got one or two left. So that's going to be, you know, trying to play catch with somebody who you can't see. Yeah, just, just it's not going to work. If you want to buy this, you can buy it from places like um, Blade HQ, Knife Center, Knife Works, you know, a whole bunch of places at $41.95. Um, unfortunately, Amazon.com doesn't have it for quite that low of a price. They've got it for $46.10 because whoever's selling it on Amazon is adding a shipping fee. Um, in Canadian dollars at Amazon.ca, we get a deal in Canada this time, $54.88. So that's you know a little bit less after you figure out the exchange rate than the Americans are paying for, for this knife at $42. So that's a good deal. And if I can find good prices, uh, especially at Amazon or something in other countries, I'll list those down below in the description. If you use my Amazon links, I do get a tiny bit of a commission, but uh, I don't expect you to use my links if you find a better price somewhere else. Um, unique features. This thumb uh, opening. I don't know, is it a thumb disc? Is it a thumb stud? Is it a thumb... What is it? It's not a thumb pad. They usually say thumb disc and thumb pad is something that you put on top of the spine to put your thumb. So 
yeah, we'll just call that thumb stud. And, you know, it's kind of cool. They've got uh, another knife that's got the same kind of opening there. Uh, designer, Mike Wallace. So probably thank Mike Wallace for this design. Uh, I might be trying to get that other knife. It's another small knife. Uh, it's, it's kind of a earth tone color. It's a green and a brownish kind of tanny color. What's it called? The Grift? Grit? Anyhow, maybe I can get that and uh, review that sometime in the future. Uh, pros and cons on this thing. Pros are, you know, it's a decent budget steel. It's well built. Love that back lock. I'm thankful that they use torque screws, but that's that's cold steel for you. They're good that way. There's many good different grips on this knife. That's good. Um, it's good for most people's hand sizes, except for the very largest. And even some guy with really large hands, like very extra large hands, might want a smaller knife. You, know, you can get a good hold on this thing if they got, you know, three finger hold with three big fat fingers. You know, sometimes you just want a smaller knife. And this is a good medium sized knife. And it comes at a good budget price point. Cons, a little too thick at the edge, and along with that, I don't like this saber grind. This saber grind, you know, starts halfway down the blade, and then it does the entire, you know, going from three centimeters starting here to here. It reduces from three centimeters to no centimeters. I wish it was a much higher grind, uh, like maybe a full flat grind. It would take more time to get down to the cutting edge. That way you can sharpen it more times before the edges, the steel so thick that it's just not a very good cutting knife. Uh, you know, I sharpen this thing 10 more times. Well, it's not mine, but if it gets sharpened, you know, 10, 15 more times, chances are very good it's going to move up and be over a millimeter thick. You know, it's 0.8 of a millimeter now. And once you start getting over a millimeter thick behind the grind, you know, you're starting to get a knife that you have to work a little bit too hard for to do your cutting. That's just my opinion. I like the pocket clip. That's really good. Um, and one tiny, one other con that's really tiny, I prefer a little less writing on my knives, but Cold Steel really likes to do a lot of writing on their knives. And, you know, it's not a big deal at all. It's just, you know, I like to see a little more just steel instead of writing. But that's okay. So this is the Cold Steel Con. Uh, decent knife and... Um, you know, if you can find this used for 20, 25 bucks, you know, I would say go for it all day long. And uh, maybe you want to get it for brand new for, uh, you know, 42 to uh, $54 Canadian, 42 US, 54 Canadian. Not bad. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. I just feel like I never thank you enough. Oh, I forgot to mention this knife. It's got a nice little sharpness trail that does help to sharpen it without you know, getting up in the ricasso. I just wish the sharpness trail was a tiny bit bigger. And as I was saying, thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Thank you to all of you guys who let the uh, advertisements run on my videos. Thank you. That really does help me out. And thank you for using my links when you make purchases. I appreciate it. Remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>